Hey everybody, welcome back to My Wings of Refuge. I hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, with the quarantine that's going on, I hope you're able to spend time at home and with your families and I hope you have everything that you need to be able to stay at home. Um, since there's so much in the news and, uh, and if you're like me, you know, I have chickens and I usually use the face mask even to clean my chicken coop. And right now, I have the one old face mask that I have used a lot. And I only like to use them so much and then dispose of them and get a new one. And so, I'm to the point now I want to try to make a face mask because not only do I need it for cleaning the chicken coop, it may come in handy for other things, especially as... The need arises maybe to run into town or to, uh, to maybe pick up a few grocery items or to pick up uh, supplies at the feed store or something of that nature. So today what I want to do is make a face mask. Um, I've read a lot of material on the best things or best fabrics to use to make those face masks. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm using what scraps I have in my little arsenal here. Uh, I'm not running to the store to buy anything to make a face mask. Um, so with that said, I am using 100% cotton today, uh, but I'm using just a regular uh, fabric here. Um, and what is they say it's recommended to be better is 100% cotton, but more in the, a t-shirt type of material. I don't wear a lot of t-shirts. Um, I really don't like how they fit, and so I really don't have many t-shirts. Um, and so I really don't have any that I just want to cut up. Plus, I've also read that that flimsy of a material also doesn't hold up well holding its shape on your face. So, there's so many mixed reviews, so many different things to consider. This is what I'm doing based on what I have here. And so, you will have to do the research and find out what will work best for you. Uh, the pattern that I'm going to use, again, there's so many of them out there also. Uh, and I, I've been searching on Pinterest and different things. I'm kind of going to mix a few together just to make my own and come up with my own. Um, but I am going to leave the little hole in there so that you can add an extra filter if you want to because mine will be the cotton fabric on both the inside and the outside but I'm going to add the slot for the filter and one of the things I want to use for the filter I'm going to at least try to use um, and they say that you can actually double your fabric like two um, Having the cotton on the outside and the inside is good, but then having maybe a third or fourth layer of that cotton is even better. Um, I'm thinking that if t-shirt woven uh, cotton is better, that perhaps um, quilt batting might serve as a good filter. Uh, it could also be harder to breathe, but as long as I make it to ply, and have the hole for the filter, I can try this and if it doesn't work, um, I can add in either more fabric or not. So at least that way I will have options. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a simple face mask today. I do have on hand, and I'm hearing there's a shortage and people can't find it out there, but I do happen to have lots of elastic on hand. But if you don't have elastic, you can also use hair ties, which, you know, I, I actually have a lot of hair ties as well. Um, and so maybe you have something like that laying around, or perhaps you have uh, a top or a shirt or uh, something out there that might have a little bit of elastic in there if you're willing to give that up for a face mask. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a face mask and uh, to hopefully stay a little safer out there and hopefully you will stay safer out there as well. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is take our fabric and I want to cut two pieces that are eight inches square. So I'm going to fold this in half. So I really only have to cut once.
Now we have our two pieces of fabric. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a small hem on about a quarter of an inch like this. Yeah, let me hold it up there. We're going to do about a quarter of an inch seam here on each piece. So I'm going to take my um, elastic here and I want to cut it six inches. two pieces here which is all I need um, I'm using quarter of an inch here on the elastic um, I had this on hand if you had a different size it would probably work just as well may not be as comfortable but it'll work okay so these are our fabric pieces that we just sewed you can see on the wrong side you can see how we folded that down and so now we want to put the pretty sides or the right sides together and what we're going to do now is sew all the way around three sides but on this top side where we have this folded down we're going to leave a space about this wide a couple of inches two or three inches in the middle wide open because what that does is it allows you a hole that you'll be able to put a filter in if you want and uh, or that extra piece of fabric or in this case we're going to put a little piece of quilt batting in there but it'll be something you can take in and out it's something that you'll be able to wash um, and so we'll do that and as we sew um, on the two corners on here we're going to add our little piece of we're going to tuck it on the inside but we're basically going to have this on each corner okay we'll do that on the inside so i'll show you that as we go and then um, i'm going to go ahead and start about three quarters of the way down really important to do that back stitching there because that's where you're going to be uh, turning it inside out and it's also where you're going to be inputting your um, filter now we're just going to sew to the edge or really close to the edge now that I'm really close I want to go ahead and insert my piece of elastic I'm going to lift this up but leave the needle in so that you have space and I'm going to put the very tip in it right up against the elastic okay that way I'm put my foot down and I'm going to sew that piece of elastic right in the absolute corner there just go all the way to the end of it and I'm going to back up again just to go over that a few times and come back one more time okay I'm going to back up just once or twice and then I'm going to lift the foot to turn my fabric sewing as close to the outer edge as possible I'm going to lower my foot and so but I'm going to stop just before I get to the end so that I can sew in my little piece of elastic. Okay, if 
find my little piece of elastic in here. I'm going to pull it up, lift my foot up so I can get the fabric in, but leave the needle in. Then lower the foot. And, and then back it up, do it again. Make sure we got it sewn in really good there. We don't want it coming loose. And then we're going to lift up our foot, turn our fabric again, line up those pieces, like that, lower our foot. So again, now we're going to be ready for our next piece of elastic. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you. So make sure you can see that really well. So here we're ready to put the elastic in again. And I'm just going to lift this foot up a little bit, put it right there in the corner. Like that, and then we're going to sew right to the end. Then we're going to back up. Oops. And do it again. We're going to turn and we're going to do this side. I'm going to back it up again just to make sure it's sewn in really good on those corners. Okay, and so all the way to the end. Stop before you get all the way to the end. We're going to find the other end of our elastic again. Yep. There we go. And we're going to pull this elastic, lift the foot, but leave the needle in. And we're going to slide that right into the corner. Lower the foot. Back it up and do it again. Okay, now we're going to turn it this way and we're going to remember just go uh, maybe two thirds of the way because we want to leave a gap in the middle. So that we can one, turn this inside out, and two, we'll have that space to put our filter in. There we go. And lift our needle and cut our strings. Now we're going to turn it inside out and see what we've got. You know, these don't have to be sewn perfectly. Uh, there's a lot of forgiveness here. The biggest thing is to make sure it fits the way you want it to fit on your face. There's so many different patterns. You can do these so many different ways. And uh, there we go. Ta-da! Okay. So we have this much done and see we have our little hole which is how we turned it inside out and um, we're not finished yet but you'll get the concept so far. So but now what we want to do is we want to put in a couple of pleats on each side here. That'll make for a nicer snugger fit um, and again it doesn't have to be perfect as well. This is our opening here. So I'm going to start right here where that opening 
kind of begins, okay? Just to make sure I leave that opening. I'm probably gonna leave about an eighth of an inch uh, seam allowance here. It's very important to back stitch. And then come back. Okay, then we're going to lift only the foot, not the needle, and turn. And my pins are kind of going the wrong way, but uh, oh well, this will be fine. This will be okay. I just got to find the head of my pin. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and pull this pin out. Put this right where I want it. And we're going to set. Oops, put my foot down. Here we go. And again, we're going to sew across this bottom just to where it's sewn because this is our opening here. So I'm going to stop right here. Okay. And then I'm going to backspace. There we go. And trim all of our little strings. Okay, oops, I have another one. 